Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chan, and today we're chatting with... Haley Smith. Hello, Haley. Hi, how's it going? Great. Um, where are you based and what do you do? I am an Android developer at Slack in San Francisco. Um, so I've been there since December working on the Android app. Cool, and how did you get started on Android? Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. I um, started out as a server-side Java developer and decided I wanted to get into mobile. So I um, went to a startup called Ardio, which is a music playing app. Okay. And um, their, app, their mobile apps at the time were written in C Sharp, and it was uh, like a cross-platform. I didn't even know that you can write mobile apps in C Sharp. Yeah, That's interesting. So they used um, Mono and Xamarin. Oh. And so, so cross-platform. Yeah, oh. and so having no experience with either platform, right. I was writing shared code for both iOS and Android. Okay. And then because there was a need, slowly started delving into more the Android side of things. Right. And that's kind of, you know, I liked it. And that was right around when the Nexus 5 came out, so I switched over and okay. was pretty Yeah, happy it's it. interesting because I've, well, I run the meetup locally and mm. usually what happens is that the Xamarin people want to come and give us a talk because uh, it's like this awesome solution, but then I know I'm an Android person. I'm like, I don't believe in cross-platform. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was very convenient for some things and very challenging for other things. Um, right. Ultimately, I prefer doing native Java yeah. for Android. Yeah, what I always say is that the cross-platform tools makes the easy 80% really easy yeah and the difficult 20 percent really 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 difficult yeah and i'm like well the easy part is easy already i can do that myself i'd rather make the 20 percent part not as difficult right yeah so it was really easy to get you know features up and running quickly right but then you would have things like well you know ios only has one process and android has two mm, or yeah. yeah or things like you know i want to use a new library now i have to write jni bindings for everything right so um, so then it gets kind of tedious and you'd mm, want to do native yeah i was very happy um once i left rdo and went to twitter to be able to do kind of oh native. so that was like a multi-hop thing and you yeah a little bit of hops the, yeah yeah cool but now you're happily at slack i am yes Excellent. very happy <laughs> and uh today we are actually chatting not in san francisco but in new york because Haley is going to be giving a talk on accessibility at joycon new york yes. city um all i know about accessibility is whenever i have an image view Android Studio will be like, you did not put in content description. Yes. I'm like, fine, I'll give you something. Uh, because this is for accessibility. Mm -hmm. So that's all I know about that. But maybe you can even just tell me, like, what does that even do? Like, why do I need to provide image view a content description? Yeah, so the funny thing is you don't actually always need to do that. Oh. Um, so the reason you need a content description for image views is when you're using TalkBack, which is the Android um, native screen reader, um, it needs some sort of indication or description so that people know, people using a screen reader know what the icon is or what the photo is, things right. like that. Sometimes that's relevant information and sometimes it isn't. Okay. So say you have a list of um, several items that are like action items and you have an icon and then also some sort of title tag describing right. that icon, you don't it's need to redundant. read both. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, you would suppress the warning. Okay. But when you're starting out, um, I think it's really great that it is, a, you know, something you can set as breaking, you know, if you want to or as a reminder. Um, okay. And then it leads you to kind of more carefully consider what sorts of things are actually necessary to be read out. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's... <laughs> that's a lot of people like kind of oh you know Liz yells at me about it so yeah it. so um, like that's interesting though so if you're really serious about accessibility do you set the content description and then turn on talk back and see what it actually does I mean, how do I even know that it was relevant um, yeah. in, in the in the context of having talk back yeah I mean that's something that I'm so, still figuring out for myself right. like this is the first time that I've ever really had ownership of accessibility on an app and I'm still very much learning as right. well um, but ideally my yeah. ideal situation would that that would be part of the design phase okay and um, like my dream situation would be a designer gives me screens gives me um, the navigation directions that you would expect um, for a d-pad and gives oh. me um, like what should be read out at what time um, I doubt many of them will give you that 
Yes. <laughs> um, which is why, as part of my work at Slack, I'm working on like a pre-release checklist and um, some sort of kind of design guideline right. that will um, kind of help us think about this stuff it's during to, the yeah, development process. Remember that when you're just like, mm -hmm. ooh, I have this new feature, I just want to get it done. Yeah. And then because a lot of it is really low-hanging fruit anyway like it's oh. not you know it's just adding content descriptions or like using min height in some places so large text doesn't break your screen stuff like that interesting um, tell me more about these low-hanging fruits because i would like to pluck pluck them <laughs> so yeah this is kind of the the main meat of my DroidCon talk mm -hmm. um the idea is that there are various things you can do as you're developing um rather than going back and doing an audit at the end that make mm. things easier so right. Things like making sure that at the design phase, your text is always high enough contrast. Um, oh, yeah. There are web accessibility guidelines. Light gray on dark gray. Mm, mm, yeah. Depends on how dark, I guess. Light gray on white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, that's not going to work. We're, we're guilty of that a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff like that. Um, another example could be like tap targets, right? Like mm. you want the tap target when you're clicking on a button to always be at least 48 DP so that people can touch it reliably. Right. Um, you want to make sure that icons are always labeled, like we said before, when right. it's relevant. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Slack, we had um, our like kind of home navigation mm -hmm. is a view pager with um, a sliding tab layout, but instead right. of text, we have icons. And I so see. I had to make sure to go back and add content descriptions for those icons so right. that when a screen reader is sliding through those tabs, it, will tell you. it tells you what they are. That makes sense. So stuff like that. Um, I didn't even think of min height as something that is relevant to accessibility. For me, it's more like a design thing, but now mm -hmm. you, once you bring in large text into consideration, then you're right. It, would not fit in there. And yeah. yeah, so I've had to change a little bit the way that I do XML layouts, you mm. know, um, because say you want, you know, your cell rows to be 40 dp exactly, well, even if your text is small, as soon as it grows, it looks really cramped, you right. know, so you want to make sure it's like a min height with padding and then that way it scales a little bit nicer. Interesting. Things like, just things like that. Um, but honestly, the main thing is like get, get familiar with the tools, you know, learn how to use the accessibility um, settings, learn how to use TalkBack. Uh -huh. um, so besides TalkBack, what else is in the accessibility settings? Um, there are things like um, high contrast text, which is actually an experimental setting you can do. There's okay. large text, there's um, text to speech. Oh, what else? Um, and that's different from TalkBack, text to speech? Um, that's more for like if you're reading. Um, so TalkBack is about navigation. Okay. So if you can't see anything at all, text to speech you could use to like read a book or something. Mm. Um, TalkBack when you turn it on, the way you navigate the app changes completely. You know you use one finger to explore the the screen and oh, as so a you single tap doesn't actually do things. Right. Yeah. So a single tap will focus and then a double oh. tap will select. Um, okay. And then you know. Long pressing is different, swiping is different, like the way you interact with the phone in general is... Wow. Yeah. So... That must be hard. I don't think I will able to use There's a tutorial. Phone. Okay. Yeah. If with you go... Talkback. If you go into the accessibility settings, the first time you turn on TalkBack, it takes you through a really great tutorial. And also my, like, family will be really annoyed because my phone will just be yapping nonstop. That is... <laughs> I'll be testing at work and forget that I have TalkBack turned on and turn on the phone and it's like max volume, <laughs> immediately plug in my headphones, you know, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, so, but a lot of the stuff, you know, even if you don't focus on TalkBack, a lot of it is stuff that's really straightforward and useful for even people who don't have, you know, a vision impairment or anything right. like that. Well, I um, like to have a big target just so that I don't mm -hmm. have to be so precise about clicking on things. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, if you've ever used Slack, we have a little blue bar that shows up at the top of the messages view. Right. And the, the blue bar is actually smaller than 48 dp, so we had to go in and manually extend the tap target because no one could click it. Like, I couldn't click it. Right, because it's so teeny tiny. Mm -hmm, I would, like, miss, you know, half But, like, the time. I guess... That's kind of the trade off. So you could also just make the bar itself really big, but then design wise, it will right. look ugly. So, so how do you make a click target 
bigger. Like we're getting a little bit of detail here. I have actually a really great code demo Ooh. in my talk Ooh, about that. Talk. So, <laughs> so I'm not gonna. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I also I think it's easier to see rather than like yeah. we won't describe to you how yeah. this works. So I also forgot the name of the class. So <laughs> well, well, fortunately, you're yeah. gonna give to your talk tomorrow, and mm -hmm. I believe it'll be recorded. Yes. So we can just refer to that once it's posted, and then people can. Yes go through and see how exactly do you do that. There's also a um, tutorial in the actual official Google documentation that I referenced pretty heavily, so. That's great. Yeah. Cool, any other thing about accessibility that I should know about as like a complete noob? <laughs> um, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me was just realizing that it's not as niche as you expect it to be. Oh, okay. Um, you know, one in 12 men in the world are colorblind, right? right? So maybe you don't want green to mean online and red to mean offline. And then, like, they look the same to me. Right, exactly. Yeah. So just, um, is there like a way that. to turn on like colorblind mode so that I can see what they see? Like, how do you audit something for colorblindness? Um, if your company has more than 12 men in it, ask somebody to look at oh. it. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Guinea pig, please, please. So at Slack, our CTO is colorblind, so he, he is pretty quick to bring stuff like that up. Right. But um, just don't rely on colors as the only visual cue like in just general. in general. Yeah, so at Slack, we recently changed. Um, before, it was, I think, a, a dot that was based on your theme that was often green or red, and then a gray dot. And so to a colorblind person, those would look the same. Right. So now the gray dot is also um, like an outline. So and the not shape in. and mm -hmm. the so there's color. two we use two channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a great tip in general because some people pick up certain things faster than other, whether they right. are impaired or not, right? Just personal yeah. preference. Or and... maybe like they're, they have a custom theme on their phone that doesn't right. go with the colors, or maybe it's really bright outside and there's a glare on their screen. That's true. Yeah. You know, especially with like high contrast text is another thing. It's right. like, it's not just for people who have low vision. It's like maybe literally there's a glare on your screen yeah. and the gray I, I like that way of thinking because it's benefiting everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of people think accessibility is like not important because it doesn't impact them mm -hmm. personally but it's not true like yeah. a lot of these considerations are just going to make your app better in yeah general. exactly and that's like one of the big points in my talk is that it's not just for some small subset of people and even if you think that people with disabilities like there's a billion people with disabilities right it's not like States. just like, it's not like the five of them need some yeah. help yeah yeah so um it's good to think about it that way but also i think considering these things makes your app better in general when you're thinking about how you would navigate your app with a keyboard it makes your view hierarchy a lot more simple you know things like that it just um kind of feeds back into the rest of your experience right. even if users don't notice it it might be a little bit more intuitive to navigate things like that that's great anything else you want to share with us today uh, Slack is hiring, Slack is hiring. Wow. <laughs> for both Android developers and accessibility experts. Oh, so, so the app is going to get even better. Yes, That's yes. Excellent. It's still very much a work in progress, but we're trying our hardest. Cool. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for if having me. If people want to find you, where they can find you on the internet? Um, I'm at Haley on Twitter. That's she probably the Haley. best way. Whoa. Yes. One of the perks of working at Twitter nice. is you get to request. I probably shouldn't say that on video. Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm at Haley on Twitter. Or you can email me, I guess, if you want, at Haley at slack-corp.com. All right, then. Thank you so much. And Thanks. enjoy JoyCon. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye.